everything you need to know in less than 5 minutes. In season 11, it seems like it doesn't even matter how Riot are trying to balance Kaisa. She always feels strong simply because she synergizes with the new item system so incredibly well. Picking her up as your main champion will definitely be a good idea because even if Riot are nerfing her into the ground, a well played Kai'Sa will always be a monster due to her mechanical depth and outplay potential. You have a super streamlined rune page in Hail of Blades, Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection and Ravenous Hunter with Magical Footwear and Biscuit Delivery secondary. Your shards are attack speed, adaptive force and armor. Kai'Sa is a hard scaling late game hyper carry and you will be unstoppable eventually if the enemy doesn't manage to shut you down during the early game. With Taste of Blood and Biscuit Delivery, however, you have the two strongest runes for the lane phase you can get, which makes the early game much better than it should be. Additionally, Magical Footwear allows you to save 300 gold so you can reach your important item power spikes even earlier and evolve your abilities much sooner. Due to Kai'Sa's on-hit passive, Hail of Blades greatly boosts your 1v1 dueling potential at all stages of the game, as three basic attacks in combination with your W will instantly trigger your execute damage. For itemization you can build pretty much anything, even ability power if you have to, which is the reason why Kai'Sa will always be relevant in the meta regardless of which items currently might be overpowered. Your most consistent core right now is Galeforce into Collector, and interestingly enough the main reason for this are two extremely broken component items, namely Serrated Dirk and Noon Quiver. In the late game Kai'Sa is played like a traditional AD carry, but in the early game you are essentially a ranged assassin. Your Q Hail of Blades W combo does some serious damage and when you get that early serrated dark you will outtrade your opponents every time due to base armor being so low at lower levels. Serrated dark is as much attack damage as 3 long swords which means you only pay 50 gold for 10 lethality. For comparison a single point of armor is already worth 20 gold in terms of value so 10 lethality for merely 50 gold is simply insane. The fact that Noon Quiver is OP is rather widely known by now, but I still want to point out that this component is 109% gold efficient and you get the passive minion damage on top completely for free. So you rush these components as fast as you can and then upgrade Noon Quiver to Gale Force and afterwards Serrated Dirk to Collector, granting you access to your empowered Q. The unique effects of these completed items also amplify your assassination potential since both Gale Force and Collector allow you to execute your targets. Afterwards you want to upgrade your boots to Berserker's Greaves and buy Runan's Hurricane and Infinity Edge. When you finish Hurricane you have enough attack speed to unlock your stealth on your E and Hurricane's passive effect enables you to stack your plasma on multiple enemies at once during a teamfight. Press the like button. Infinity Edge naturally allows you to get the highest value possible from all the critical strike chance you've bought so it's an easy choice. Your last item is rather situational so you need to make that decision depending on your individual game. Generally speaking though, you will have more than enough damage at this point, so you can easily afford to build a more defensive item here. You don't deal damage when you're dead after all. However, Kai'Sa can adapt to your individual needs much earlier if necessary. If your enemies have picked two or more tank champions for example, you should go for Kraken Slayer instead of Gale Force. Against tanks, consistent damage is much more important than assassination potential. Should your team exclusively consist of physical damage dealers, you can adapt to that as well by transitioning into ability power items after your core build. This works because Kaiser's passive on hit and execute damage is actually magical and has a substantial ability power scaling which then forces your enemies to buy magic resist against you. Now as far as abilities are concerned, you want to max Q first, E second and leave W at one skill point as you mainly need it for triggering your passive while your other spells provide much more value with level ups overall. Your Q is probably easiest to use since it automatically selects its targets for you and can never miss once it has locked on. Just keep in mind that its damage is distributed evenly between every single target in range, so make sure you don't fight your enemies in their minion wave or your damage will be much lower. Your W is primarily used as a combo finisher or to snipe fleeing enemies as it not only applies two stacks of your passive but also has a 130% attack damage ratio. This is why it hits so incredibly hard even at one skill point. Keep in mind that this spell also provides vision, so you can use it as a mini hawk shot to scout nearby jungle areas due to its solid range. Kai'Sa's E spell is very strong for engaging because it serves as both a gap closer and an attack speed steroid. The burst of movement speed is also high enough to enable you to dodge skill shots aimed at you, and once you unlock its stealth upgrade it is a strong repositioning tool in teamfights as well. Your ultimate however is an even stronger repositioning tool and it also allows for the biggest skill expression on your part. Learning when exactly to use it to pick a fight, when to hold onto it to punish a positioning mistake in teamfights, and how to use its attack reset and shield for maximum 1v1 potential will take time. My advice is to use it defensively at first and then progressively start limit testing yourself. Now if you found that video helpful, you can access an entire playlist of educational content like this by clicking the link on your screen right there.